Okay, uh, hello everyone. Um, this is a uh, review um, and repair um, videos for the Prusa Mini. And uh, I have got this Prusa Mini for almost two months now. I think that's more than two months now. And uh, I had a lot of joy with this little machine. It's very, um, it's quite affordable and um, at the same time, it gives us uh, uh, quite good performance. The printing speed is not as uh, as quick as uh, Max Ray. I mean, due to the Bolden uh, configuration, uh, you can see the Bolden Bolden uh, the tube actually PTFE tube is going along the way uh, compared to the um, uh, the trustworthy um, Max Ray Max Ray S. Um, but overall, um, because it utilizes a 32-bit microcontroller, and uh, so everything's quite smooth. You know, the, the menu is quite good, and I've got a lot of print actually um, you know, over the past uh, few weeks, and uh, most of them turn out um, to be um, to be really good and super smooth and uh, no much of the inconsistent extrusion and uh, you can see the this is uh, the was they look brilliant i mean um for such a small machine and i think uh thanks to the uh the tmc 2209 uh, controller um yeah, this is an improved version. I have a more uh, thick layer, so the water wouldn't leak out. Um, overall, I've been pretty happy with this uh, little uh, with this little device, but um, uh, I've got some hiccups. Um, I think f uh, like three, four weeks back, and um, I keep contacting the the pusher support. I think I I talked to I checked to them uh, for three times, and then. Unfortunately, uh, they pointed me the direction, but no, uh, it didn't work that well. Um, the first problem um, actually uh, started with uh, you know the the filament grinding. Grinding. So you can see um, from this filament, um, basically this is the extruder. And uh, so basically, the filament gets in uh, from this uh, white PTFE tube, and uh, it's not a bond tight gear uh, setup. So there's another idealer. It's just a, bo a bearing um, for the um, for the you know basically for the extruder. Um, but um, actually, it keeps grinding the filament, and then up to a certain stage, it will stop extruding uh, from the whole tent. So at our beginning, I suspect you know it's kind of the you know the uh, you know it's not new um you know the filament grinding because the you know the those gears they get full of the you know full of the the particles. So I thoroughly clean it up, um, but uh, actually um, you know it just keeps jamming. Sometimes it just come back back to work for a while and then you know jammed up again. Um, I mean, I never had this issue, uh, you know, I, uh, I, before, before that, you know, um, it's just, it worked fine, uh, for over a month and uh, all of a sudden just stopped. Uh, maybe I just print too much of those, uh, test print. Um, so I just reached, reached out and then, um, and, but before that, I mean, I actually, I went through their online, um, documents, online and knowledge base articles. But unfortunately, I think this is still quite early stage of the Prusa Mini, and then there's there aren't much of the maintenance guide available online. So I think you know you put you sh you have to put all of your um, coins on their uh, in on their on one place basically just uh, chat to them. Um, they point out you know uh, maybe something wrong with your. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. The firstly, uh, at the beginning, just pick up, yeah, just clean that. But actually, I did a quite a, quite a number of times. So it turned out to be, uh, you know, something happened here. Um, so in order to do that, um, so you need uh, their uh, supplied, uh, basically a spanner. 
basically there's uh, but I highly recommend you to buy a set of this um, either adjustable banner or this is uh, you know, a banner set um, you need to buy this uh, um, size 7 wrench so you can just uh, take on the nozzle uh, because just uh, the fit the nozzle and so you can just uh, take it out uh, so the first thing first is to the uh, and jam the nozzle. Um, so by doing that, you just go to the uh, the settings and uh, and go to temperature, and then you just uh, change the nozzle temperature to 260, um, 265, 270 is up to you. But you have to change to the higher temperature. So basically, it will help you just to to push out the filament. Um, so after you heat it up to 270, um, you can choose to do the cold pull. Um, I think I'll post the link down below. Uh, so basically, uh, you'll find the link how to do the cold pull uh, from their official guide. And uh, so this, you know, this will fix, you know, uh, you know, some minor issues like if your nozzle is blocked. Um, you know, definitely you can do, uh, you know, you can just do the cold pull, you're helping a bit. But in my case, it didn't help me fix the problem. So, you just heat it up to 270, 260 again, and then use their supplied uh, spanner. This is their supplied spanner from their, uh, you know, accessory uh, package. So, you just uh, use a spanner just to take this, uh, you know, the top screw out. And so you can pull out the you know the whole filament, but make sure you heat it up your nozzle first because otherwise it's gonna stuck. And once you finish that, and then you take out the um, the you know the second um, you know the second uh, screw you know, from the hot end. So this you gonna this gonna give you access to the uh, to the PDFE tube. Um, uh, I'll explain you why the uh, you know actually to cause the jam. I mean, um, I also I'm pretty sure there's an uh, f official guide. I mean, um, um, you know um, how to um, how to you know, take this one out. I also put the down uh, link below. Um, so once you you've done that, um, you need to use this little Allen key. Let me just uh, I'll grab my Allen key. See this little small Allen key. And then you see this stray little screws, you know, um, you know, set screws on the, you know, on the side. So all you need to do is uh, basically loose them, loose all of them. And um, so once you loose them up, and then you can use um, some of the tools like you um, just to pull it, pull the PDF YouTube out. Um, You'll find a spare PDF tube in your um, spare mini um, package. Um, you know, it's just uh, something like that. But and I didn't use this one because my one's still usable, actually. Uh, it's just the misalignment uh, actually happened, maybe throughout the, the hours after hours print. Um, so those steps, those procedures, you know, they all included in, uh, in the official guide. But um, so when you put it back, you know don't uh, don't um, don't uh, hurry uh, just to uh, to tidy up the the screws when you put back the PDF tube. You need to put PDF tube all the way down. So um, so make sure the PDF tube actually um, hits uh, you know hits the actual uh, you know the end of this uh, the heat break. And um, so once you've done that. And you need to push this, uh, you know, this heat break to to leave it up, and uh, so you see the actually the white, uh, you know, PTFE tube located actually is moving. So that's a very good sign because we want the tight fit. And uh, so once you, um, you know, and then you push this little heat break, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, basically back up. Up to a certain stage, you'll see this little. Um, um, I'll put I'll post the photo, um, uh, you know, in the video, and um, so you'll see the, 
you know, this little, um, this little uh, tube actually moving up and then up to a certain, um, uh, basically they have a boundary there. So you just uh, leave it for the uh, one millimeter, two millimeters, uh, you, know, uh, you know, gap. And this is very important because um, you know, if you don't do this run properly, uh, you'll, you'll cause, in my opinion, you'll cause insufficient cooling. So, for example, if your um, heat breaks too low, yeah, definitely you can adjust uh, you know, the first layer cal uh, calibration. But you'll cause, uh, you know, this the bottom part of the, the heat break actually cannot be cooled sufficiently, so um, especially the gap. So I'll post the photo, you know, uh, you know, if you don't do it correctly, you jam the begin and then you need to redo it again. Um, so that's pretty, that's pretty much, you know, the trick, you know, how to, how to you know, align this little, uh, you know, PTFE tube and also how to align your, uh, your, your hot end uh, and also the height, the adjustment, the adjustment of height is quite important. And, um, and once you've done that, um, you know, don't get scared to adjust your um, basically um, your uh, pin or whatever you know this is uh, you know the sensor because you know I got scared at the very beginning um, you know I I can't change it because you know they mentioned it's, uh, it's a calibrated in the factory but you know don't worry about it I mean um, he, once you've done this I mean you you possibly have to adjust the height of this because otherwise when you do the first layer calibration, you might go beyond two, um, you know, um, you know, two millimeters. So you know, the you know the calibration won't won't allow you to go beyond two millimeters difference, uh, minus I mean uh, minus two millimeters, um, and so basically, so once you pull this one back, you can start tightening the screws, um, this all these three lock screws, and then um, so make sure they're tight and also properly parallel, properly aligned, and then you need to put this uh, put the screw back. Actually, you know when I was doing um, you know my previous repairs, you know the failed repair, of course, uh, I usually get uh, you know actually usually feel a little bit tension. So actually, I got a little bit concerned. So I lose the screw and then it went down again. So uh, the went down, um, you know. So basically, uh, you give you the same kind of the you know the the filament jam. So don't worry about it. I mean, I think um, when you resemble this one back, you will feel a little bit friction when you screw it back, and then I think keep that um, you know keep the pressure on the on the PTFE tube. So you will make so that way. You will make sure actually there's no gap down to the bottom because definitely you don't want to want, want you don't want your filament actually leaking out of this um, this uh, you know, to the bottom of the PDFE tube and go somewhere else because that will cause uh, you know um, you know clogging. Um, so if you follow all of those steps, um, you know you are more likely to uh, to uh, to put your machine back to work. Um, like I said, you know, I went through all of those pains and, um, you know, most of the time, you know, I just uh, find bits and pieces, um, you know, from the, you know, from the Reddit, from the Prusa document. Um, but actually, you know, when they do the nozzle, uh, you know, basically, uh, maintenance, um, they didn't mention too much about the height of the, of your, uh, hot end. And this is really important because you know if you don't do that properly, uh, you know you're more likely to have the same issue over again. They might give you a a good print once, but you know maybe at the, the next time usually it won't pass the first layer. I mean, uh, and then it get clogged. Um, so I do hope this video actually helps someone uh, struggling uh, adjust the uh, you know the hot end. And I also I do hope um, Prusa actually publish um, the more maintenance document, so it will help uh, you know the end user just uh, you know to to do the proper maintenance. I mean rather than uh, you know basically work out the hard way. Um, so if you um, like find this video useful, uh, make sure you like and subscribe the channel. And uh, and also feel free to ask me questions, you know, by um, basically the put a put a comment below, 
and uh, yeah, uh, good luck for your uh, Porsche Mini and uh, happy 3D printing.